Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. Let's begin a new. Uh, it's not really a new, you know, we're only like halfway through the cycle and such. Whatever. Oh, anyway, a few things I want to talk about before we begin. It's nothing too serious. Oh god. Ugh. Fuck ugh. Anyway. I uh first just got done with the stream. 4 a.m. You know the deal. I played a mod for this game. I played Dusk's Balance mod. Dusk, viewer of... I believe he watches these videos. I'm not 100% certain. And also, uh, he watches the stream pretty regularly. He made a mod, rebalancing a bunch of things in the game. Really good. Uh, I would recommend you check it out. I will probably have a, one of the runs from that over to here sometime soon. Because it was pretty good. It was a good run. And I would recommend you check out his mod. It's really fun. If you've been having trouble with staying interested in Monster Train and you're like me and you're like, ah, this balance patch doesn't really add a whole lot, you should check out his balance patch because it adds a lot of changes and there's a lot of different fun ways to play the game. And I'll have a video of me playing that up sometime soon. Also, the Noita video finally went up. It went up yesterday. If you want to check that out, I'd appreciate it. I'm maybe going to start a series on that, but also, you know, college is a little tough right now. So maybe I'll wait a little bit, but I'm going to play some of that eventually, I hope. And I think there was another thing. Oh yeah, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Let's begin. Days Talos, Spell Shield fell, Patient Seraph, we are unfortunately melting Umbra. Wicklash Space Prism Subsuming Blade. Let's get to it, shall we? Oh, it's not so bad. It's not that bad of a run after all. Alright. The change to Rector here to add plus 5 to him on the baseline, and he gets plus 5, plus 5. Is that enough for me to say hell yeah? This is the nightmare, of course. Uh, I'll take Accumulator. I think I play Accumulator and then I try to play a Harvest unit behind him and that's just gotta be the plan. It's not a good plan, but it's gotta be the plan. I'm gonna play Aggro here. If we get two good drag draws, we get a really good start here. Or even just one drag, really. Melting Umbra is tough, I will say. And there's no other way for me to put it. It's tough. It's my least favorite. Will I argue that it's the worst? Nah, I won't argue that it's the worst, but it's my least favorite, without a doubt. I do not like playing this clan combo. Harvest, the, the reason is, the thing that really kills me here is Harvest Rector is just so bad here. The, the, num the pool of units that I can put behind in Melting Umbra is just units I can put behind Rector in Melting because you can't put Umbra units behind other units. That's not 100% true. You can put down Morsel Maker slash Morsel Master behind him. So you can't really put anything meaningful down. We got some cool tricks here to mess around with, though. I can play another. I can, I can do something a little flashy here for you. To take zero, I believe. Unless these are... Okay. So... If I were to do something like this, I'll take... Oh, no, I don't take zero, huh? Why not? What's wrong here? Why doesn't this work? Oh, because the burnout kills them all. Yeah, yeah, Okay, never mind. It's not flashy, I'm just a fool. I wonder if there was a way for me to do something there. Anyway. What I was going to do was play three Wicklash units, but the burnout does not allow it. I thought I was going to be smart and slick, but it doesn't work that way. That's okay. It happens. You can't win them all. I can't have everything I do be insane. That would just be ridiculous. We're fine for this round. Uh, it's a shame we took the two, but it's no big deal. Two damage, uh, walking out of this combat, two damage post-trial. Solid. We kill off chains. Something that really bothers me, and maybe one day this will be changed, but it, it really bugs me that Chains is just a strictly better version of the other boss. 
There's some variance in every other location in this game, but Chains is just straight up better. He's just, he's the other boss, but with that resolve effect. And it's so weird to me. I think about this every now and then. Anyway, uh, Hollow Dripping's got a lot better. I wonder if I could play a bunch of burnout units behind Rector? I don't think so. I mean, here's the question you gotta ask. What burnout unit am I gonna play behind him? Draft plus Paraffin Enforcer is the one that comes to mind. The problem with that is that I have to pull Draft and draw it in the top half of the deck. And also draw it- yeah, no, it's really bad. I'll just take Entombed Explosive. And I'll take... Antumbra Assault? Eh. Okay. I can't make good use of morsels that I generate, though. That should have been a skip. That should have been a skip. Yeah, I think that was supposed to skip. Because Umbra units are really bad here. I think I double go for the melting banners here, because Umbra units... The problem is... There, there's places where you can overlap. Like, you can overlap in having plans to kill backline, and overlapping the kill heavies is good, because having multiple heavy killing plans is just what you need to do. Having multiple plans to kill the boss just kind of sucks. Because what ends up happening, if I go to this right path here, right, is I get, like, I open up this Umber banner and I get, like, Crucible Collector, right? And I spend my entire combat scaling Crucible Collector and scaling Rector, and then the boss just dies to Rector, right? Or the boss just dies to Crucible Collector, right? Or the boss kills Rector and dies to Crucible Collector, but if I had spent the time that I spent scaling Crucible Collector, scaling Rector, then the boss would have died to Rector, right? That's the reason that I don't feel good about this. So, like, the unit that I would take is maybe Alloyed Construct would not be bad. But that's one unit out of... I believe it's eight. Not counting rares. Maybe that is counting rares. Either way, I'm gonna go to the Melting Banners. Hold over plus 10 and minus 1. Hold over my subzooming blade's kind of cool. What you got for me? Tragic. Just absolutely unfortunate here that we're seeing this. It's such a good run to have Burnout Rector. I just need Burnout Rector. Yeah, that's tough. Alright. I mean, we might just die in round two, which would be unfortunate. I'm gonna try a hold over on Subzooming Blade here. Maybe this can kill heavies if we're lucky. But if we get a bad Melting Banner... Uh, yeah, I need this unit draft. We don't have a choice. I'm gonna take a lot of Pyre damage for this, probably, but it's... It's really important. It's important enough that I'm willing to risk the amount of Pyre damage that we're going to risk here, because, like, we need it. It's not just, I want to get a unit draft, it's like, I need I need to hit a unit or I'm dying to Daedalus, right? I'm gonna probably take a lot of damage for this, though. It's, it's a big threat, but you make sacrifices. You gotta do what you gotta do. Other such empty words that I say. God, I wanna greed so much. Oh, I want the Collector. It's fine. It's probably fine. I should not have done that. I'm gonna draw something. I mean, I, I think I have to draw something that's fine here. Yeah. Didn't draw my Subsuming Blade, by the way. I suck at this game, by the way. My next turn, it's three train stewards. I can play a drag. You go in front, I think. And the boss is the eight attack man, I believe. Yeah, it is. I don't know what your name is. Last night, that's who it is. What an absolute nightmare of a combat. God damn. 198. All right, we get somewhere here. I think we won't die at the very least. 
That's good. But not dying here is good because I took the trial and it was very greedy. Utilizing train stewards as my plan to kill the boss. Not ideal. Not what I want to do. But you do what you must. Hmm. Could have gotten a subsuming blade off here, actually, instead of playing that Wicklash. Yeah, that was silly. Oh well. Alright, just reward me with a good unit for this struggle. Draft is not what I want, I don't think. Molten Encasement is good. Immortal Trade got bumped to Lifesteal 4? Huh. Interesting. I, I've forgotten most of the changes they made because I've been internalizing all of the changes in Dusk's balance mod. I thought that he just upped it from Lifesteal 3 to Lifesteal 4. However, the devs did that. Kind of surprising. I thought the card was good at 3. Anyway, uh, Crucible Extension, not great. I don't think I want any of these. Oh. It hurts me. Deep inside, it hurts me. It hurts me a lot. I think I have to take Collector. If I take Collector, then the death doesn't come if I whiff at this Remnant banner. It's like a safety net, basically. If this banner is not... The unit I'm looking for, by the way, is Wickless Baron. If I don't see Wickless Baron, I'm looking for Paraffin Thug. It's one of those two, for sure. Uh... Why don't you like Harvest Rector and Melting Umbra, they say. No one said this to me. No one has asked me this question. It's pretty clear why you don't like this clan combo. And why you don't specifically like Harvest Rector here. There's no unit to put behind him. I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh, I hate it so much. Here, take the Wickless Tycoon, I guess? No. Just take a Shade Splitter. I don't know, man. This run's fucking doomed. I need something real crazy to come out of this one for us to not die. I mean, surviving Talos will be shocking to me. I took the Crucible Collector, I guess, to make sure that I survived Talos, and I'm still not sure. Ugh. It's like, it's maybe okay. The only thing giving me even the slightest amount of confidence in our ability to get through here is this burning candle. Or exploding candle, I should say. It's so good. Exploding candle is so good on this run. It is excellent. I want to Subsuming Blade something. I guess there's no reason not to. And then we just scale that guy on the top floor so I actually get through. Because the problem is, I can give I can give Rector as much health as I want. I can't kill a boss on a floor that does 28 damage. Not reasonably, anyway. Soulsucker is the one that has asted units on it. Indeed. I'm gonna keep scaling this because I think it is actually our best chance. He doesn't count as dying, right? Yeah. Just wanted to check and make sure that that's right. He doesn't count as dying, it's counted as something else now for the purposes of Burning Candle as well. Which is interesting. Hmm. This turn's also interesting. I am. Taking damage for however I play this, right? I play it here, and I'm taking the two, which it means I'm I, I'm taking zero, right? And then I play it here on the next turn, and I'm taking the six plus the... It's like eight damage. I guess it's fine. I don't really gain much by playing it on the middle four this turn. It's better, maybe better to play it on the bottom four that turn, but I don't know. 
I don't know, I'm doing a lot of, doing a lot of thinking for, uh, feeling like the death is imminent. Maybe we can sneak it out, though. I gotta give it a, I gotta give it a solid maybe. So if I pop you... What happens? 20 goes through, we take 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that's fine. I will get to Subsuming Blade onto Talos three times as well. I guess it's two times, really. We probably live this combat. If I die after taking the Crucible Collector, my man, it's tough. 312 here. 346. 360, 452, and we finally end at 514. Alright, we survive. That's good enough. 37 damage per round. Daedalus would have tore us apart, by the way. Daedalus takes us to fucking town. Thank god this was Talos. Extra 2 damage and we just get blasted into the stratosphere. Ugh, Remnant Pact. wonder if I could win off of Devourer of Death. That's when you know it's really desperate. Oh my god, I went to how- I saw how many unit drafts? I saw... Two regular three unit drafts and two mounting drafts without seeing what I wanted. It is unfortunate. So now the question is, will Paraffin Thug be enough? I mean, I guess it's enough, right? It's 20 damage, which is, by definition, better than 10 damage. Albeit, slightly. No take, or no Baron makes me very sad on this run. We'll have to make do with Paraffin Thug, I suppose. Big draw. I... Maybe if we get the multi-strike here... It doesn't have to be here, but maybe if we get the multi-strike on this run, and then... Or maybe you are... Large stone? Which fell is it? It's spell shield? I don't think I can afford to give him health, honestly. Hmm. God, how do I kill heavies? How, like, that's all there is to it, right? How do I kill heavies on this run? Bosses we can probably piece together with uh, Crucible Collector. Rector doesn't have to do it, I guess. But then Rector's just fucking worthless. But what's new? Realistically, what's new? It's so weird, right? I could just give Wickless Tycoon a plus 10 instead, though. I think I have to... I'm planning on playing all three of these guys on the same floor. With the space prism. Alright. Let's follow it like this. Because it's... Yeah, it should be fine. I'll roll. There's the multi-strike. Okay. Maybe we have a way through here. Plus 5, plus 10. Does it, what does this protect him from? It protects him from Pyre Wings on floor 7 and Rage Boys on floor 5. Which is worth. I think it's worth the, the loss of 5 damage to protect him on those two combats. It's close though. This is not a, this is a run that we are very much uh, min maxing. You gotta you gotta be sure you're squeezing every ounce of value out of your run. Maybe like I, I'm just I'm just gonna say maybe a lot of times and then maybe we'll survive. Likes for this is a nice combat when you're having trouble with double heavies like we are. Subsuming blade. I can't take spikes here, though. Every combat where we draw Space Prism before the Paraffin Thug is a good combat. One up here. The Zooming Blade turn one is nice as well. I don't know, maybe this one's winnable. It's possible that we could see a way through here. If I don't touch anything, I make a lot of money here. Right? 
If I don't play, because it goes 5, 10, and Director. Director does 15, 20, and then he cleans up. If I touch this in any way, I lose a kill. Better to do it like this then. There's nothing for Burning Candle to kill. And the interesting thing here is that the only reason to hold Collector on this run is to delay draw priority. I need him to get in the mix so that I have a chance of actually hitting uh, my units in the order I want to. Or rather, getting to the Space Prism before I draw both Paraf and Thug and Tycoon. And eventually I think I just phase Tycoon out of this. But I don't know, we're making a lot of money. We have this Remnant Pact. I guess I keep Crucible Collector and then I can just Endless Move Rector up there. And it's not good, but it's not bad. Just put Rector up there and we can maybe sne we can maybe cheat our way through Sarah up here. And if we if we win this, it will just be cheating. I'm gonna play Elevator Strats, but with a bunch of garbage units. And 20, I want to not kill one of these with Subsuming Blade. So I'll do that. So what do I, how do I... I get another Endless Tome? I duplicate Endless Tome and I just... God, it's like full elevator here, huh? And I think it's correct, too. I'm gonna... Greed to the maximum amount possible here. Unsurprising, I'm sure. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make the absolute most of this. We're gonna squeeze every drop of value out of this run that we can get. Every single drop of value that we can find on this run we're gonna hunt for. It's gonna be a tough road, but we can maybe get there. One thing that would be good is Remnant Host would be really good. Crushing Demise helps a lot here. Yeah, that card's really good. Furnace tap, huh? They gutted it. Look at this. No rage? What the hell? I don't understand why they would do this to furnace tap. I don't think furnace tap is very good here. Crucible extension's kind of nice. Add another card I can draw to add more space to my rector for. I'm down with this one. I need a lot of space on this run, I think. Uh, maybe not. Actually, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Upgraded Shade Splitter. It's free. Nice. It's a good upgrade. I think that's probably the best upgrade to get for Shade Splitter. Plus 25 gold. Becomes zero cost. Plus 25 gold. Is really good. I'm gonna go right for the removals. Mm. No, I'm gonna go left. I need these unit upgrades to be good. I'm not sweating it too much. Burnout 1 is nice. Nice on Molten Encasement if we get Endless, right? That kind of handles the boss if I can pull Endless here, actually. And by kinda, I mean that handles the boss. Okay, okay, okay. So now it is just... How am I killing heavies? I don't need to think about the bosses anymore. We have a good plan. It's just heavy. So it's crushing demise held over for one of them, and then I just maybe tank it for the rest? I don't know. Crushing demise burnout candle, though, is a match made in heaven. I want to give you none of my pyre health. Pyre health is like gold. Very important. Yeah, so we just, we look, if we find a second holdover, I think we can win this. I think my only spell that does damage to enemies is piercing. It is indeed. I'm starting to believe. If only just a little bit, I'm starting to believe. The big question now that we have to answer on this run is how much value in terms of gold can I give up? Or how much, rather, how much value do I need to, uh, Worry. How much value can I get out of the gold? That's what I'm trying to say. Play mid floor here, actually. I'm greeting, and that's okay. 
This is sweep. I played drag. No, I don't think I. I think I can do this. Although, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I don't think I need him. I potentially lose the collector, but. No, I have subsuming blade to catch the collector. Right. The, there's nothing at risk here. Yeah, and I get more money. Although, maybe I lose money? I lose money for doing it like this, actually, because of the paraffin tongue draw. How weird. What a weird turn. And also, I can't play paraffin tongue right now, because. Uh, so I'm missing the collector after all. Yeah. There's like. I did not, uh, I did not micromanage this turn very well, but that's a really hard turn to micromanage properly. There's a lot of choices to be made on that turn. Oh, I'm out of space. Oh. Huh. Right, because I need the second space prism before I can play a unit. Okay, so I can't be... Nearly as greedy as I would like to be. I don't think. That's okay, though. I'll just press end turn here. I mean, I'm being reasonable. I'm getting a reasonable amount of money. I'm getting a pretty good value. But I wanted to get a lot more value out of this. That's alright. Yeah, so one of these guys, I think the the Tycoon is just going to go bottom floor and he's going to have a lot of 50-50s to survive, is the play. Okay. Drag up here, do that, take the subzoom, it's fine. I'm, I'm starting to see where this one's going now. It really is just a matter of min-maxing my... Uh, my income, though. It's also a matter of kinda having a rough one in terms of draw here. The stealth tomb at the very end is a little scary. Ah, oh, we're fine. Try my best to get one of these guys a kill. No dice. That's okay. Our rector is pretty big. He's a 57 to 13 at this point. 57 to 13 is close to what you want to see on Seraph, so on floor 5 that's pretty solid. Burnout Candle is just carrying us to an extreme degree. Remnant Host is good. And I do not want any of these. Okay. So I need to stop greeting at a certain point in this run. I think that point is right now. I think this is the time where I need to stop being greedy. And this is where we dial it back. So first of all, Crucible Collector, thank you for being here today. I didn't need him, but I don't think it was wrong to take him. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Hell's Banners. The, uh, if, you're, if you're not watching, if you're just listening along at home, Right after removing Crucible Collector, I was shown fossilized fangs. We had holdover. I think that's a dub. I think that that is actually a W. I'm not a not hundred percent confident in that, but I'm like, I'm reasonably confident that that's gonna be a win. It's just, it's thin the deck out, so we hit the important cards now, and then we are... We're good, I think. I think we're good. It's really, it's hard to say, though. Especially against Patient Seraph, things can get out of hand very quickly. It's just that turn one draw you gotta worry about. Okay. Uh... Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna play top four. The Endless Tome is mostly worthless, and that's okay. Alright. It's weird, but I think it's fine. 
Although nothing comes up here for a while, so I might have to kill this remnant host myself. What's explosive do here? Nothing? Basically nothing. What do I do with you? Guess I just play it here. That's fine. Yeah, not being able to get these remnant host boys out is tough. I'm gonna need to kill them myself, I think. Zooming blade. Or something. You don't want to kill them through burnout, ideally. It's a little awkward. I could endless the remnant host here, and then I get a bunch of... Huh. Try that. See how that goes. And I don't... Actually, I should... Mm, I should. Yeah, okay. And then I play it. Shade Splitter. And I flash that, so I do 10 to them all. And then the armor's nullified. Burnout Candle can struggle against the armor effect, something that I am often forgetful of. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Oh, a Molten Encasement, right on time. Okay, this pops out 40, so 57, 107 that we can go above here. I think we have uh, pretty well on lockdown. Not a big threat of hitting that number, I don't believe. I guess I could have put that up here. As well. What eats that? A giraffe eats that? Huh. Interesting. Alright. So the problem and the reason that I need to really get rid of this Wickless Tycoon is I'm losing all of the backline slays for Rector. That's what I just realized. I need Rector to be getting those backline kills and he's not. Because I'm killing things down here for the money. And that might end up being costly. We'll see. Got a whole hand of holdover and such here. Alright. I will play... Rumble Morsel. Alright, Tycoon. Win your 50-50s. Nice. Good work. Put a 56 down on something? I'll be still in a kill, though, if I do it. Let's put it here. Oh, I could have put it on the Molten Encasement for the kill. That's what I should have done. I didn't want to do it on one of the backliners because I thought I was going to steal a kill from Paraffin Thug. However, I was just wrong about that. Encasement. Remnant host. Play a little subzooming. I'm going to keep using the morsels to make him survive, right? Survive your 50-50s or pass away? Yeah, pass away? That was just tragic. That was really tragic. Like, that was just god-awful. Really the worst of all possible outcomes there. Killed Tycoon and killed the backliner. Just absolutely terrible. Oh, killing my Molten Encasement is bad. I can't do that. I didn't even realize it was bad. Hmm, okay. Because now I have to, I have to do this, right? But if I do this, this guy farms me. I take a lot of damage here. Alright. I'll do it next turn where I kill him. Or I could get burnout, but you know. I don't like that that much. Tough. Very tough. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. That's what the greed gets me here. Take a lot for it. And it's okay. You know, we're greeting and it's part of the plan. It's... Am I dead to fell here, you think? I don't think I'm dead to fell. Should be throwing out the remnant host, I suppose, for what it is worth. Not worth much, but it's worth something. I guess it might have been better for me to play it up there and kill it. No, I think it's better to play it like this. We good? Yeah, we're good. 
Okay, I missed the gold. I missed the gold. What am I doing? What's he doing? You can even see it there. Oh, please, you're so loud. Alright. 48 damage for that one mistake is tough, but what are you gonna do? I don't think I need Blazing Bolts, although we're kind of just Nickel and Diamond, the 105's health heavies there. And that's not something that we get to do later, but we're gonna kill him with Crushing Demise. Yeah, it's okay to skip this. Alright. I can take Draw here, I believe. This one's... it's really close. It's really close. So here's what I need. I need a unit with Burnout and Endless to play so that I can Crushing Demise, or... No, I don't need to do it that way, actually. Okay, no, I don't need to play it that way. Okay, okay, never mind. I was about to follow a line that is silly. Yeah, I just... I need to Crushing Demise the floor above Rector and the gang. I'm gonna go left here and I'm gonna remove... I'm gonna remove Tycoon so I don't bait myself here. I need to not bait myself to death and I remove Shade Splitter. I'm zooming Blades putting in work. I wonder if I duplicate it. Worth considering. Grab this first and then I'll think about it. Ah, oh, Burnout. How terrible. I could duplicate Crushing Demise, I guess. If I'm gonna duplicate Subsuming, I would just duplicate this, actually. Then you just double crushing and all the heavies are dead. I actually like that a lot. Alright, so heavies are handled. Uh, I think we're okay. Spell Shield. My only spell is Piercing. Let's not try Ventumbra Assault. Not for long, though. Really good trial. Really, like, I'm surprised that this one's coming together. Crushing Demise can potentially... Yeah, what a good turn one. This is an insane turn one. Out of this world, good. I will end us here. My, It's really important that I have the Hell's Banners plus the double draw. Because it's actually very difficult to... Uh, it's actually very difficult to play all of these cards otherwise because of the number of Endlesses and Holdovers that we have. It gets to be a little much pretty quick. Okay. The stealth is a big factor here. I wish I had a way to scale this Paraffin Thug enough. I'm gonna hold these? Nah. Yeah, nah, I'm not gonna. The Space Prism's not showing up in a good timing is a little awkward, but it's probably okay. A hundred damage. Once you get in, like, around a hundred damage for your floor is roughly where you want to be for dealing with Seraph, I think. I can play you in front, right? Ten? No, I Yeah, I can. The burnout happens, right? Forgot, almost forgot about Burnout. Give a plus 10 here for whatever. Oh, and I can Subsuming Blade. Cool, I'll give that. And we don't need the two Crushing Demises for this combat. The two Crushing Demises really only come in handy for the double heavies that happen on Seraph. It's easy to forget that there are two heavies in later sections of the game. I extended his Burnout, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, what's wrong with... It's okay, it happens, is what I'll keep telling myself. I don't need both of these now. It was energy for that too, goddamn. How silly. Not a great move on my part, I'll give it to you straight. I think it's okay, but not a good move. Not a good move. Oh yeah, that... It just takes that. Alright. Looks like we got there. I am kind of surprised, because this is a run that felt pretty doomed. And... 
It's crushing the mice, right? I don't think I was wrong to feel like this run was doomed. It was pretty doomed until we saw crushing demise. Really. Just skip everything. I don't need anything else, I don't think. It's just draw cards in the right order and don't get screwed by patient Seraph. As soon as we hit the melt uh, the molten encasement, I think the run is more or less a W. I think it's a going in the winds column. There are not too many Urkels on this team. That's a Kanye West lyric. And Tumbra Assault needs to go from this deck. Okay. Extinguish triggers an additional time. Sick. Uh, Mold Braces. Also sick. And Burnout 3 is really bad. Play your third card of the turn. Draw one. Pretty good. I don't really need the draw, though. All the cards that I draw into that I need are holdover. Oh, I should remove these Wick Lashes. Yeah, that card's really bad, too. That's probably even worse than Shade Splitter, actually. I'm just gonna spend my money on removals, because I have nothing else to do with it. I'm down with that, and then I'll just grab a Relic. I'll buy a Wing Steel. I think that that's fine. The Wing Steel is not great, but it's uh, what I can afford here. I think it's the best of what's on offer. Okay, so we want to play middle or bottom based on where Seraph is. So bottom here. We play bottom. Drop the thug. Get the space prism in as well. Okay. It's not over until we hit the molten casement, but it's looking pretty good here. Make Seraph do a 50-50. Oh yeah, we also get to chump block with morsels, which is easy to forget. Subsuming Blade up to 80 damage, which is pretty good. The Subsuming Blade did really well here. I'll, I'll give it up to Subsuming Blade. I'll give Subsuming Blade a little recognition. Did great! Did really, really good. Okay, Seraph's down here. We hit the Molten case minutes over. But just note, 91 health plus 1 damage shield. And I lose him here. In case you're ever confused about if Seraph the Patient is thick, the answer is yeah, sure is. Order, well, realistically I made, like, you know, I'm pretty confident that we went off of this, but it's possible that maybe I have made a terrible mistake. I'd be surprised, though. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hold right click a little bit. Vector's gonna have a lot of uh, melee weakness on him because of this, which is not optimal. However, okay, so I'll use you. Fine, is my bottom card? It is Remnant Pact. Right, we have the Remnant Pact. Oh yeah, we win for sure. Okay. Never mind, we're fine. Just hold these over. Although, do I draw my whole deck? I do draw my whole deck every turn after this round. So, Holdover is now useless because I draw all of my cards. Interesting. Interesting. This here. I should put a Morsel up there, I guess. Leave one. I don't have to play for Holdover because I just draw all of them. Oh no, I have the Endless too, so it's not quite all of them. There's eight cards in this deck right now. So the takeaway from this run, if you're wondering, what are you what are you supposed to learn from this one? Crushing Demise is good? Hmm. It's kind of hard to say. Is Crushing Demise a good spell? I'm not sure. Personally, I think it could go either way. I think that, like, th this run is a run that you look at this run and you go, hey, maybe Melting Umbra isn't so bad. This run is the absolute, like, perfect run in terms of so many things, right? Burnout Candle, Burnout Endless Molten Encasement, like, two crushing demises with Holdover. 
This run is like all you could want from your melting run. Like this, this is just it. Umbra is also here somewhere, I think. Space Prism. Umbra provides three Space Prisms. But no, this run's impossible if you don't have Melting Candle. Just recognize, we had we have 18 rounds of stealth and a damage shield, and Seraph was still getting a hit in there. Just make sure that's clear. That's how, that's how long it takes. 711 health, though, so pretty good. I just tend to assume on runs like this that I'm not going to high roll in any meaningful way, and we high rolled. We high rolled quite a bit. The Hell's Banners really clutched a lot of awkward situations, though. Really, really uh, thankful for Hell's Banners on that run. It did great. And double draw was really important. And Crushing Demise, dude. Crushing Demise, Molten Encasement. That's it. And Subsuming Blade to smooth over some of the awkward parts. Cool. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, do not forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.